Okay, so now we're gonna record the receive payment that we would base on the estimate. So now we're gonna say, if I look at the flow chart, we're gonna say, okay, we made an estimate to help us to, to save the guitars and not, not so we have them on hand. And then, so we're gonna reserve the guitars and then we're gonna go to the receive payment here before we make the invoice. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go to the receive payment and let's go to the forms and we're gonna enter a receive payment. And this is where we get the advanced payment. This is kind of like an undeposited funds uh, kind of uh, problem. And I'm going to say this is going to be for customer number five. And so it says five's payment doesn't have an open invoice. We can't apply it to anything because remember the receive payment decreases the accounts receivable, but it doesn't have a specific sub ledger account for customer number five to decrease. So for the sub ledger, it'll have a negative amount in there, but that's okay. That's just what we want. I'm gonna say it's for $200. I made up the $200 in practice. You might base the $200 based on the estimate, taking like 10% of the estimate or something like that. If you were to do a system like that, I'm gonna say the payment's just gonna be cash. Even though it went over the phone, it would probably like be like a credit card or, a, uh, or an electronic transfer, but I'm just gonna record that just to do our normal kind of process. And then we're gonna be putting it into the payment to deposit it instead of directly into the checking account as our normal process so we can group them together in the, using the deposit form like we normally do. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna create a, a decrease to the accounts receivable, but a negative receivable for the customer sub ledger for customer five that we can then apply out to an invoice that we'll make in the future. The other side's gonna go into our cash type account, but the payment to deposit account. So let's save and close it and check that out. And it's given us our little, our message here. I'm going to say, that's okay. Save it as a credit that we can apply out. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to go to the tab to the right and then run it to refresh it. And then we've got here, there's the 200 and the payment to deposit. And then in the accounts receivable, the A to the R, we've got the 200 down here. That makes sense. But there's a sub ledger thing. Notice there's no impact on the income statement, by the way, because even though we got money, we haven't done the work. You haven't done the work to earn the money. So let's open up a new tab. I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate the tab and look at the sub ledger for accounts receivable, A to the R reports on the left-hand side, closing up the buggy and scrolling down who owes you. Let's take a look at the customer balance detail report. And then that looks good. So this is for customer number five. There we have that negative amount. That's not exactly correct because it should be a positive liability. But as we discuss in the other advanced discussion, the last advanced discussion, it works quite well logistically. That's why we use it. There is another method you can do if that really, if you really want to, but we can adjust that periodically to make the financial statements correct using an adjusting entry type of process. So I think this actually works quite well because internally, if I go to the left-hand side and I go to my sales tab and I look at my customers, if this customer comes in, then I've got this nice estimate on the left that I can search by over here and say, oh yeah, you have an estimate that I can make an invoice uh, out of. Let's hit it again because I unsorted it. There you are. If I go into that, there it is. Oh yeah, you've got an un unapplied payment of $200. I see that we received that. That is quite nice because you can have someone who didn't do the estimate before that doesn't know what is going on can look at this information and see pretty plainly what's happening from the bookkeeping side of things and say, oh, okay, well now I'll use the estimate to make an invoice, right?